Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Hope you're all doing really well. We appreciate you watching these videos. We're having a lot of fun making them. I was just tying up some flies for the boys at the shop and I thought, gosh, we haven't done a streamer video in a little while. So I thought this would be a fun pattern to show you all. This is what I think of as a trout slider. It's kind of a hodgepodge of what I've seen other people put out there. It's really similar to most of the templates you see out there for articulated flies, but it gives us a chance to show off some new materials like ripple ice dubbing and just really dive into trimming a deer hair head with a dubbing underneath. And you don't get to do that a whole lot. Before we get started though, if you haven't done so, think about subscribing, especially if you're a Midwest angler. This channel is for you. And if you liked what you saw, think about hitting that thumbs up button helps us out, it helps other people find these videos. But enough of that, let's get to the vise. First thing we need to do is grab a hook. This is a TMC 9395. It's a good straight eye trailer hook. It's fairly long. Um, I use them a lot. Also the 2461 from Daiichi is a good substitute. Just using 6 aught in white here, starting about mid shank. I'll work back to the hook point, trim your excess. Next you can grab some Polar Flash, Flash Boo, whatever you got. I like this Polar Flash. It's a good blend of straight and crinkly fibers. Probably take four strands or so. I'm gonna fold that over the thread. Bring it to the top of the shank. Tie it on back to the barb. Great. Set in this material clip here. Doesn't matter if you have one or not. Next, we're going to grab our rabbit. Here, I'm using micro pulsator strips. It's a little bit thinner cut zonker. If you have standard zonkers, they're going to work fine. I wouldn't use the magnum unless you're tying a really big fly. We need to measure this out, and I'm using the leather here. And I want to measure the leather underneath about a shank length. Okay, once you have that spot, kind of pull that fur back and expose the leather so you can tie right on top without trapping too many fibers. I give it three wraps, fold this back. And I'm gonna start working my thread back up to the tying point. Here we're going to make a dubbing loop. If you've never done one, check out this video right here on the top corner. It's real simple. You're just going to double it over. I'm using my finger here and then I'm going to work around this loop I've created and wrap it back to where I want it to start. Bring my thread forward. I'm just going to let the loop go for now. Add two or three half hitches. I'm not bringing this all the way to the eye. That's pretty important. Usually, usually leaving half an eye, or excuse me, an eye or two length in front. All right, this got a little twisted. I love these really nice tools you can get with the roller ball bearings, but paper clip works too. Once you got your loop all set, you can grab some dubbing. Here we're gonna use Ripple Ice Dub. This is a little bit newer product from Hairline. It's a lot shorter than what you've probably seen as the Ripple Ice Fiber, which is fairly long, really cool product if you're making brushes or tying really big flies or you wanna take the time to process it and get it just like you, you prefer. This is a lot shorter. It's perfect for a dubbing loop. So I'm just gonna kinda of align some of these fibers here Use that tool to keep the loop open. Insert those fibers. I'm using this instead of ice dub, which is a good alternative as well. This is a little bit longer. Some of the ice dub out there, we can talk about this another time, but there's 
two or three different types of textures you'll get in ice dub and knowing which one is kind of tough um, just looking at the packaging but you can always ask us we're happy to help with that fill that dubbing loop up and then we're going to start twisting now a lot of people will grab a brush or a velcro tool or a comb at this point my favorite tool for this is a simple bodkin and i'm going to show you why because you can just go right down the thread here and pick these fibers out without just tearing the dubbing loop apart i've had it happen too many times where i get going with the brush and a quarter of my dubbing loop just doesn't have any fiber anymore so this is a really low impact way to maintain all your fibers in there pick them out especially keep the length of them and that's what we're looking for i want this flash to meet up with the back of that rabbit could you do this in a hurry absolutely but i wanted to make make this look really nice for you guys right so all right i'm gonna wet my fingers i'm actually gonna orient these fibers back you can see they're headed this direction it makes it a lot easier to wrap i'm gonna start using this rotary function which if you don't have a rotary vice that's okay this will still work fine you just gotta do it manually and i stop every few wraps and i work everything back because it's gonna want to twist on you that's okay that's normal one more and see I'm leaving an eye length up there which is great get your cradle out of the way tie that loop off trim your excess and then I come in and I all use my thumbnail just a little bit and creep that back just a bit I'm gonna wrap over it Maybe I'm not the only one who's had this happen where you tie it off and you start brushing and boom, the thread's just gone instantly. Tying this off a little bit more, wrapping down on top of it is going to make it a lot more secure. Your fly is going to last longer and you're going to have less mishaps at the vise, which is really nice. I'm going to grab my Velcro tool. I'm going to comb that out. And I want to comb it down. I don't, don't need much material on the top of the shank. I want it on each side. Grab your rabbit. Bring it to where your thread is at. That's going to be your tie-in point. Again, we're going to clear a spot where that hide is exposed and you're not trapping tons of fibers. A little bit's okay. Three wraps on top, three or four in front. Scissors in, trim it. Again, a few extra wraps do not hurt. Grab a brush, comb, whatever you got. Comb that out. Looks pretty uniform. I'm going to trim these flash fibers off right at the tips. And we got one more step, but I want to show you see how this fiber works its way back behind the bend of the shank. That's what we want. It gives it a little bit more full look. Looks a little bit better, I think. Next thing we're going to grab is some schloppen. This is MFC's barred schloppen. It's pretty good stuff, but every package, just like from every company, you can't use 100% of it. So I actually hang on to some of these that I don't like so much. And this is perfect for adding a little bit of veil wrap up front. I'm actually going to trim off most of this regular schloppen. Bye-bye. Save this, actually. It'll come in handy later. Make sure you get under the stem to all right this one has a little bit of those webby fibers and then it goes down to marabou which is perfect or marabou like feather 
fuzzy. We want that hot fuzz, all right? All right, two wraps will probably do you there. You're gonna trap some fibers up here, that's okay. Comb this guy out. The reason we're putting this in here just adds a little bit of consistency to the fly. Kind of ties everything in a little bit better. And we're going to use another wrap as the first thing. It's going to hide that connection. Um, the first thing on that second hook up front. Sharpie. Secret weapon if you're using white thread. Which I like using white thread since there's that white dubbing. But I hit this thread with a sharpie, and it'll give the thread a nice black finish. Not that it matters, but details. I like details. There you go. You can add some glue if you like to the, or some head cement. But that's the rear of this fly. For the front of this fly, we're going to use a A-Rex Trout Predator in a size one. This is a great hook just the right amount of mass in this wire in order to help keel this out. So we're gonna add our thread. We're staying with six aught. Don't worry, I know a lot of guys really bump up for the connection, but I think if you, if you tie it down right, there's nothing to worry about. I've never had one rip out. We are going to grab our rear fly. Add a little bit of wire to it. And then two beads. These are the larger uh, 3D bead size. If you're using smaller beads, maybe three. Just like having some separation between these things. Okay, this is a point <laughs> that a lot of people struggle with. This is this is where a lot of things go wrong because you want this wire to be vertical right you want it to be straight up and down and this wire has a twist to it so the trick is not be in a hurry take your time and figure out what's happening with this wire it's okay to do this more than once make sure you get things correct so i'm still tying things in on top of the hook and look vertical wire no big deal if you take your time you will get it so I'm going about three quarters of the shank of the hook Next thing we're going to tie in some double pupil eyes up here. Bring your thread up to about an eye length behind the eye. Flip over. I usually do six wraps. Flip it. Six wraps. Opposite. And then I give it X wraps. Get kind of weird with it. Big thing is you need to have some space in front of the eyes in order to tie some deer hair in. That's really important. That's whole part of the head of this fly. Uh, at this point, you can also move them back just a little bit if you need to, just by pushing on them. But All right, we're taking the butt end of the schloppen feather we used for that wrapping on the back hook. I'm actually gonna tear off some of this bottom marabou style feathers. I'm gonna tie that in, and that's gonna be kind of a, a veil for our connection. Tie a little bit in on each side. It just, it makes things look better in the long run.
one on each side. Think of it as a hemisphere type of deal. It'll encompass this. Just something to make your fly look a little bit better in the water. Because you don't want two separate flies swimming through the water connected by some beads. You want one consistent fly that looks a little bit more realistic. Trim off all your excess here. Without trimming your thread off. Next we're actually going to grab the schloppen piece we did not use from earlier. We're going to tie it in by the tip. Also going to grab some UV polar chenille. You can use pearl here, you can use olive. I like the silver. This is kind of a white and olive color scheme. You can use pearl, but the silver is so much easier to work with. The pearl tends to curl up a lot more. The silver has straighter fibers in there. And in the long run, why not work with something that's just a little bit easier to work with, you know? All right, bring your thread on up. Not quite all the way to the eyes. Now, if you haven't seen the tutorial from the guys at Fly Fish Food on how to do the complex twist bugger or ours. This is that technique. It's really cool. We get to twist together flash and schlop and, and you build a really strong little rope out of it. You need some alligator style clamps like these. You can buy them at the hardware store or the Loon makes a great dubbing spinner called the Gator Grip that's perfect for this. Trim them both or get them both. Trim them. Now they're the cord and the stem are aligned here. I'm just going to start twisting, kind of like we did with the dubbing loop. And in between these twists, give it a little brush out. And you don't have to go too crazy. You don't want this thing to break off. That's plenty. This is going to be the support for our marabou. It's not going to get seen a lot, but uh, it's going to do an important job. Otherwise, that marabou we're going to tie in next just sits totally flat, and we don't want that. So these can be pretty well spaced out. There's not a lot of material here. If we get four twists out of this, I'll be pretty happy. back I'm gonna wrap back on top of it kind of like what we were doing with ouch that hurts grab your marabou here we're gonna use two different plumes we're gonna use a barred olive again from Montana fly company and a white and it, it kind of creates this really cool unique color pattern the big thing to remember no bait fish out there, no real, I mean, not much of anything is all one color. That's why it really helps to blend colors and kind of create more contrast, good looking flies. You can use the rotary function here. We're just getting a few wraps on here, so I'm not too worried about it. Work these fibers back, helps to wet them a little bit. I'm looking for two to three wraps. Gets a little messy, don't worry. 
You can always clean it up later. Use a bodkin here actually to separate some of these fibers out so I can tie this off. Grab some legs. I'm gonna use olive here because there's a little bit more white than olive in the marabou and this will help balance out that color palette. One on each side, folded in half. Whip finish at this point because we're gonna change threads. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is spin some deer hair and make this head. You need some gel spun thread. If you're not using it yet, try it out. It's totally worth it. This is just uh, GSP 100 from Vivas. Now I'm gonna start right on this bare shank. I'm not really worried about it because I'm only putting deer hair on the top. If I was spinning deer hair this whole head, I probably would start it further back but this helps you get a really secure start to your fly. All right, you're gonna grab some deer hair. This is olive. You can use belly hair if you like, but to form a really good collar, it helps to have deer body hair. All right, I always open this up with the tips oriented the direction I want. So you can see they're oriented towards the back. That's exactly what I want. Stacker can be moved at that point. There'll still be some stragglers, that's okay. And I'm gonna measure these tips out to back, back about where the bend of the shank is. Seems really long, but it'll be better once we tie these in, they'll flare out. They won't be all the way back to the bend of the shank. Change hands and we're gonna trim it. This will make a mess, be prepared for that. And see how little I have out from the thread. A lot of times people will tie in with all this stuff in front and you want as little out in front as possible. I'm gonna add just a little bit of tension each wrap. This is my third wrap. And I'm not letting go with my left hand. You gotta keep this pinched or it's gonna start to twirl and, and spin. We don't want any spinning on this one. Come on, rubber leg, get out of there. And I'm slowly working forward and that gives you this nice big ramp. And that's gonna spread out nicely. You can let go after you see you've created just a half circle on top. It's kind of this hemisphere of hair and that looks great. For the bottom, we're gonna use some laser dub in white. We're gonna continue this olive and white color pattern. It's gonna be real important that every time you add some deer hair, you add a little bit of laser dub and that just keeps the ratio working because you can't add just a big chunk of laser dub at the end and expect it to look good. Now rotate. You don't have to put a whole lot on each time. A little bit goes a long ways. Put two wraps in between and one in front or two, but that should hold it just fine. All right, on more deer hair. No longer need the stacker at this point because we're not utilizing the tips. Don't cut this too short. It's tempting, but it makes it a lot tougher trimming. I'm gonna set this down there my right hand, transfer it to my left. I'm gonna actually bring the thread, if you can see, let me move my finger out of the way, behind the eye. And this is gonna lock it in on top. We're gonna do two wraps and then I'm gonna start to add tension. Again, I'm not letting go because I want all this hair to stay up top. Great. 
great. Now to lock this in, a lot of people will just start reefing on this and that's where things go wrong. What you want to do is move this hair out of the way and add tight wraps to the shank and that will lock things in. Work around your eyes, more laser dub. This one's always the toughest because you're working around the eyes. That's okay. Take your time. That's a little bit more hair. Sometimes you can get these in just one giant stack of hair, but if you really like a tightly packed head, two stacks are the way to go. That first wrap is the most important because you lock your spot in behind the eye. Then you can start to add some more tension four five wraps again if you reef here you're gonna cut the deer hair that's just part of dealing with gel spun thumbnail pack that in there your thumbnail is a great tool see how that exposed the eye and we can start to kind of lock that deer hair off at this point i typically like to clean the rear side up a little bit or the underside. And you can trim this off now, but we're gonna add just one more little piece of laser dub up front. Once you got that all locked in, grab your whip finish tool. And you're going to need to hold this deer hair back so you don't trap too much of it. I usually do two whip finishes on these just to make sure. come in right at the eye I'm gonna do one big cut kind of up this slider head is a little bit more flat and a little bit less curved like you'd see on sex dungeon or a zoo cougar center that up and you shouldn't even have to push much and that is the basis for a great looking fly is one straight cut you want to get good at this just get a blank hook and some deer hair and practice and then trim it all off and just repeat you don't want to wait until this part to get good at trimming deer hair from here it's all little finesse cuts last thing I'll say about trimming deer hair is 
don't over trim. I mean, I, I think I've fallen into that trap before and I've seen a lot of other people fall into that as well, where you just trim and trim and trim and trim and then you got nothing left actually. So trim her down, make her look decent. This is not a commercial fly. Remember, you're just trying to make a functional fly that's fun to tie. And that's hopefully what we did here today. Thanks for watching everyone. We really appreciate it. If you haven't done so, think about hitting that subscribe button. If you liked what you saw, think about hitting that like button that helps other people find these videos and helps us out a lot. Leave us some comments. If there's something that was helpful here for you, let me know. Uh, if there's something you want to hear more about, let us know. If you tie this fly and actually catch a fish on it, I'd love to see it. Um, catches fish for us. Hope to see you all very soon in the shop or out on the water.